troubleshooting a drivability concern on an automatic transmission nowadays can be a bit intimidating. At least I know it is for me. If you feel the same way, stay tuned. I've got some tips coming up that just may make that challenge a bit easier. When it comes to repairing an internal transmission issue, I'm going to be the first one to tell you about as far as I want to go is a valve body or a torque converter. Anything much more than that, and I'm going to turn this job over to a tech who has the experience and training to do the job right. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to do all I can to solve my customer's problem on my own. Here's the process that I use. Automatic transmissions have been around since the 1940s and use hydraulics to control the different gear sets. Today, most automatic transmissions are electronically controlled and may be overseen by a dedicated control module called a TCM or Transmission Control Module or by incorporating those duties into the existing engine control module which is then referred to as the PCM or powertrain control module. Diagnosing a concern with an ECT or electronically controlled transmission is not all that different than diagnosing a concern with the engine. The key, I think, is to apply a similar diagnostic process and use that process to first determine if the customer concern is valid, second to determine if the problem is actually in the transmission. And third, if the fault is in the tranny, is it in the electronics or hydraulics? First, verify the customer's concern. If your service writer has only scribbled a few notes on the repair order, you may want to talk to the customer yourself. Even take them on a test drive so that you can be absolutely certain you understand what they are perceiving as a problem. My next step is to become familiar with the specific operation and service inspection procedures for the vehicle I'm working on. While I'm online with my service information source, I'll also search for any related technical service bulletins or TSBs that may be related to the customer's concern. As with issues related to engine drivability, many of the fixes you'll find involve performing a reflash or reprogramming of the software used to control the operation of the transmission. Now that I've done my homework and I've verified the customer's concern, it's time to check some important basics. You know, many transmission issues can be traced back to the condition of the fluid. So let's start there. Be sure to follow the OEM's procedure for checking the fluid level. Some vehicles, like this Ram, use a conventional dipstick method to inspect the fluid level. Other models may not even have a dipstick and require special tooling and procedures to accurately check the level of the fluid. Transmission fluid can range in color from pink to a dark translucent red. When inspecting the fluid, keep in mind that the appearance of the fluid is not, by itself, an indication of its condition. It's not unusual for transmission fluid to change color over time, becoming more reddish brown. And this does not necessarily indicate any issues with the transmission internally. Often, a good fluid service and filter change will be the only repair you'll need to recommend. However, if you note that the fluid is black and giving off a strong burnt odor, well, that indicates that something internally has overheated and could also indicate potential damage inside the transmission. A simple fluid and filter change here may not be the only solution your customer is going to need. The same is often true of a fluid that has a milky appearance. This is an indication of water contamination, likely from a leak allowing coolant to find its way into the transmission cooler. It can also be caused by severe use, like driving through a flooded area 
or overly aggressive off-road driving. Water in the fluid can lead to internal clutch failure and a fluid exchange is not going to correct or prevent that. A low fluid level could allow the fluid to aerate, getting tiny little air bubbles in them that you may even see evidence of when you check it on the dipstick. Now air doesn't compress, so when you introduce that into the hydraulics, it's definitely going to affect the hydraulic operation of the transmission. If you do find the fluid low, top it off with the correct fluid for the vehicle, perform another test drive, and see if that's all it took to solve your customer's problem. If the fluid level was low, then you'll also need to find and correct the cause of the low fluid level before you return the vehicle to your customer. And remember, not all leaks are external. Transmission coolers that are incorporated into the radiator can allow coolant in the fluid when they fail. It can also mean transmission fluid in the coolant. Pop the radiator cap off and see if there are any signs of transfluid in the coolant. Check the mileage and history as well and recommend a fluid and filter change if it's due. If the problem still exists, the next step is to connect your scan tool. Many of the codes related to transmission operation will be standardized and available in global OBD2 mode, and that's a good place to start. If no codes are found, perform a full system scan using the model specific enhanced mode of your scan tool just to make sure there are no OEM specific DTCs hiding from you. Either way, record any DTs you find, including any freeze frame data available. Then clear all codes. Cycle the key and start the engine. Allow it to idle for a few minutes. Shift the transmission through its full range and then turn the engine off. Recheck for any stored codes, either matured or pending. Note what you find on the repair order and if you did find any DTCs, repair those first and retest. Remember, Many of the inputs used by the engine are also used by the transmission. For example, a throttle position sensor code could very well be a part of the problem in the transmission shift quality your customer is concerned about. On to the test drive. Begin with the vehicle in the bay. Start the engine and allow it to idle. Shift the transmission from neutral to drive, back to neutral, then to reverse, and finally, back to neutral. Perform these steps several times, paying attention to the time it takes for the transmission to actually make the shift. Long delays between the time you initiate the shift and the time the transmission actually makes the shift can point a finger at low line pressure or defective hydraulic components. Keep in mind that symptoms that could result from low fluid level and aeration can also happen if there's a restricted filter. And that's not as uncommon as you might think, considering how popular it is to use a transmission fluid exchanger to service the fluid. Now, I'm not saying that's not a great way to get all the old fluid out and all the new fluid in, but it's not gonna get the debris out of the filter. The filter still has to be serviced the old fashioned way. Drive the vehicle from a standing start while trying to maintain a constant throttle position. Note the shift quality of the transmission. You should be in top gear at around 45 to 55 miles per hour on level ground. Repeat this procedure at least three to five times. Make note of any abnormalities you feel or hear and when they occur. Now it's time to get model specific. Check your service information system for any troubleshooting aids that relate to the abnormalities that you've discovered so far. In the case of the RAM, if no codes are present, but shift quality is abnormal anywhere across the various gears, the OEM instructs us to perform a quick learn procedure using a capable scan tool. This procedure allows the TCM to recalibrate itself and must also be performed when any of the following occurs. 
One, a transmission assembly replacement. Two, a TCM replacement. Three, a solenoid pack replacement. Four, a clutch plate or seal replacement. And finally, five, a valve body replacement or recondition. Issues in the electronic control system is right behind issues with fluid condition when it comes to the majority of transmission concerns. On many models, you can isolate between an electronic issue and an issue in the hydraulics by simply disconnecting the electronics and performing another test drive, manually shifting through the gears. If the problem goes away, odds are you'll have to focus your search on the electronic side of the controls. If it doesn't go away, then odds are pretty good it's in the hydraulic side of the transmission. Now, not all models will allow this test, so check your service information to see if this test is valid for the vehicle you're working on. If not, follow the troubleshooting recommendations for verifying the operation of the solenoids in the valve body. One method is to use your scan tool to turn the solenoids on and off while listening to them at the pan. Better yet is to watch the current through the solenoids with a scope. If by this time I've identified that there is a specific shifting issue, but I've also verified that there are no issues with the electronic control units, inputs, or solenoids, then I've gone about as far as I comfortably can go. It's time for me to turn this over to a technician who has the training in dealing with these multi-speed automatics. And speaking of time, that's all the time I've got for this edition of The Trainer. I'll see you next month.